I'm Doug. And I'm Kathy. Join us as we follow the moon. Recently, we got to spend a little time in Brooksville, Florida, and today we want to share with you a couple of our favorite things that we did while we were there. We uh, got to spend some time at Nature Coast Botanical Garden. That's actually just a short drive away over in Spring Hill. Mm -hmm. And we also went to, I'll have to see if I can pronounce this right, the Chinsegat Hill Manor. <laughs> And we've got both of those coming up for you, but we're going to start off today with some of the, the quirky side of Brooksville. They've got a lot of things to offer and hope you enjoy. Well, downtown Brooksville has a lot of decorations, graffiti, whatever you want to call it. A lot of painting on their buildings, different scenes. You can hear the... Uh, the city uh, hall clock tower chiming there. This was one of my favorite buildings. There's a lot of old buildings there. Uh, it, again, it's one of the uh, Florida, old old Florida look. The, the big old the live town. oaks yes. and brick streets. Yeah. Another yellow house. We seem to come across those a lot. The neighborhoods seem pretty quiet. Now we are coming up on a couple of the uh, historic treasures in downtown. This is a piece of historic sidewalk from January 6th of 1914. And it was originally poured uh, and then made obsolete by horseless carriages. It's even marked in there with the date, January 6, 1914. That is actually on display at the Brooksville train station, which is also being renovated. It wasn't open. Unfortunately, it and seems like that's been our luck with all the, uh, the train things that I've been wanting to go to. Other than the one. But 1885 was when the original train station was built. And if you see over on the, uh, the side over there, that is a uh, original one room schoolhouse that unfortunately also was not open. Around behind it is a trailhead. We really didn't have time to, to take the walk, but it was very pretty there. I love the, uh, the trees, the canopy of trees. This is a park that was right next to it. And way across there, there was a children's playground. It's one of those cities that the architecture and everything, you just never know what all you're going to see as you drive around town and through town, like just dinosaur. <laughs> this was out along the road in between Brooksville and uh, Center Hill. Got his tail caught in the fence there. Now, this property was acquired by the state of Florida in 2008, and nonprofit group Friends of Chesegate Tinsegat Hill was formed. They oversaw a $1.5 million renovation and the manor has been operating since 2015 as a museum. Very stately, very beautiful. And this little sign that we're going to take a look at actually shows the various uh, changes that were made over time. The picture to the left was uh, early. You can see the widow's walk was taken off. In 2014, they brought in an archaeological surveyist company who used soil core test 
metal detectors, and writings left behind from former residents. As you look across there, the signs actually show pictures and, and show some of the artifacts that are on display in the, um, in the manor itself. This um, manor is built on a hill. It is the highest elevation in Florida. Now that right there in front uh, of you to the left is an, a building that was actually built over the original cabin site. And then the rest was added on over time. Now they are funded by renting out the seven cottages that are on the property. Chinsik at Hill Manor House is five miles northeast of Brooksville. And the word Chinsik is actually uh, an Inuit word that means spirit of lost thing. And uh, when the owner who named this uh, by that, he actually added uh, spirit of the lost of lost things and found. At the conclusion of the Second Seminole War, the, the Armed Occupation Act offered in uh, 1842 settlers land to build and plant on. Colonel Bird uh, Pearson was uh, from Southern California and he claimed 160 acres to cultivate sugar, uh, sugar cane, citrus, and raise cattle. He constructed a cabin and he named it Mount Airy. In 1851, he sold the property to Francis Higgins um, Etterington, who constructed, uh, started the construction of the manor in 1852 and completed it in 1854. In 1866, Colonel Russell Snow married uh, Etterington's daughter and gained control of the manor and the plantation and renamed it Snow Hill. He also added cotton and corn to the production. They remodeled uh, the house and uh, added uh, the, turned the attic into a th three bedroom, three bedrooms and a sitting room. They eventually added uh, timber to their production. In 1895, citrus groves were frozen from the great freeze of Florida and they managed to have several trees survive and were able to offer budstock for nurseries and groves and helped reestablish the citrus production in Florida. Etterington had a large family. Many descendants still reside in Hernando County today. In 1904, Elizabeth Robbins purchased the land for herself and her brother, um, I believe his name is Raymond, and he married and they uh, renamed the, the property Chinsigat Hill. They improved the grounds and the manor and uh, he served as advisor for all seven presidents from Teddy uh, Roosevelt to Franklin D. Roosevelt and was um, appointed by President Wilson as Commissioner of the American Red Cross. As the crash of Wall Street in 1929 left them in financial ruin because they donated $250,000 to the First National Bank in Brooksville to help the local farmers. Robbins uh, made a deal with Herbert Hoover to donate the estate to the um, government and be allowed to live on their remain on live out the rare, their remaining 
years there um, and throughout their time they uh, they entertained countless people now the University of Florida leased the property in 1954 as a branch uh, library utilizing Robin's 8,000 volumes at the end of their lease they uh, abandoned the property taking the books and the university of southern florida leased the land to utilize as a conference center in 1992 the u.s department of agriculture transferred title of uh, uh, of the of the to to u uh, u of south florida and then in 2003 it was added to the national register of historic um, places these are just pictures of the, the college years. That's when the, the people would come there and, uh, and study. So many of these old plantations that we've seen in Florida have been burned through the, the wars. And this is nice to see one that's still standing and, and what it really would have been like. It was very peaceful and just a beautiful throwback in time. Now next, we took a short drive over to Spring Hill. It's about a 20 minute drive away from the park where we were staying. And we went to the Nature Coast Botanical Gardens. This is a free botanical gardens and it's actually supported by the Spring Hill Garden Club. They actually have a nursery there on property and they're open from nine until noon on Saturdays and Mondays. And those proceeds, as well as donations, are what keep the uh, botanical gardens open and free for the public. They are pet friendly as you can see and uh, it's just a beautiful little park. This section here as you first go in on the right is uh, all bromeliads. It's called the bromeliad garden. This was especially nice for me. Um, I've always been an avid gardener and um, for those of us who are traveling, it's kind of nice to go and be able to walk through uh, various gardens. It's how people express themselves when they are um, in a sticks and bricks and they want something magical to go out into their backyard. Now this area here was on the left as you come in and it's called the Fantasy Garden. This is what you see as you come through the gate, but actually as you enter the Fantasy Garden, you start to see how it got its name. From the heart-shaped bed there in the middle. To the little gnomes and woodland creatures. I love the bird beds. Nice little sitting areas throughout the gardens too. That's a strange little creature. Mm -hmm. This little tiny house down there. Now this area was their native Florida native plant garden and uh, do keep in mind that we're, we're seeing this in late January early February so 
as you go through different seasons of the year, different things will be out in bloom. Yes, we do have a winter down here. Yeah. Now this is right across from it. This is the Asian garden. This is actually one of the, the larger areas. And uh, one of the things that, that really struck me here, right straight ahead of us, those are stands of bamboo. And they are huge. I wouldn't even want to guess how many feet tall. They're pretty tall. This was my favorite. I always wanted a koi pond in our yard. And it's so nice to go somewhere and actually get to see them and, and know that these places that we go to, these are our yards. We can visit them all across the country. Now this is actually at the rear of the Asian Garden. And uh, they had some pretty nice sized koi in this pond. They sure did. They would hide under the bridge and then when they thought that you weren't looking, they'd come out and look how many there were. So pretty. This was actually a really nice day. It was overcast every now and then, the sun would come out, but it was, um, Florida gets so hot sometimes, it's, un it's uncomfortable to be outside. And uh, this was just a perfect day to, to be out. Now coming down the back side of the Asian garden, you see the bamboo hanging, hanging across the walkway. This was something I thought was, was really neat. The water curtain. I love that. Very peaceful. You could just hear it softly in the background. Almost gave you the illusion of it raining on a perfectly dry day. Mm -hmm. Now this is the Memorial Garden. The Memorial Garden does have a statue here signifying Mother Earth. It also pays tribute to our country and our troops. Now this is the Rose Garden. Roses are some of my favorite. I actually love all flowers, but roses are very special to me. I was kind of amazed for being this early in the year, how many roses were out. Real pretty gazebo, very peaceful area. And I don't know if it'll catch in the, uh, the video here, but this area had a lot of butterflies. It's actually a good season for them because they aren't burnt. Now this area is under renovation. It's a waterfall area with a train around it. And it is being renovated 
and a new train, new village, and new waterfall on their way. Now, this I thought was one of the neatest things. This is the rainforest area. And all the big, lush, rainforest type plants that we do get an opportunity to see here in Florida. And directly beside the rainforest is the desert scape. And that was so odd. Mm -hmm. Now that in front of you is not a tree, that's a cactus. We had one of those in our yard and it's a prickly pear. Those things are awful. If you get too close to them, they will literally jump out and go through your clothes, into your skin. This one was trimmed up like a tree and uh, it was really, really cool. Right across from the desert scape is the butterfly garden. And they had gotten out because they were over in one of the other areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually were seeing more of them over in the rose garden. But again, it's all time of year. Everywhere you go, there's benches and chairs to sit on. It's really nice. And it's open all day. You can, you can spend as much time there as you like. Now this is called the secret garden. And who doesn't like a secret garden? You never know who will be peering out at you. That's right. Now that was one of the biggest bird's nest ferns I ever saw. There we've got some flowers. Now I had Maggie with me while I was filming this. And uh, she found something in here that she thought was especially entertaining. It wasn't the turtle. <laughs> One squirrel just went up the tree. And then there was this guy. There he is. Wagging his tail at us. Once they get two foot off the ground, if she's on the ground, she thinks they just disappear. She's just now starting to uh, realize that they actually are going up those trees. Now, Kathy, tell me again what this is. Um, a mimosa. It's a red mimosa. It was just outside the palm garden. All kinds of palms from low to the ground to the tall queen palm.
I love poems. Nothing like poems to say, this is Florida. Mm -hmm. This plant, as we entered this garden, was one of the most fragrant plants Is that called the olive tree or the olive tea mm -hmm. olive tea yes and azaleas These were beautiful. Just so perfect. And then this whole section was the same plant but in red. Camellias. And there were a lot of bees around. If you have a garden, be sure to plant lots of plants that bees can spend time in. And it's important to uh, our ecology. This was the poinsettia garden. And you always think of poinsettias at Christmas, but uh, they're beautiful year round. That's right. Now they'll get really tall. <laughs> now as we wind things up here, we're going to show you uh, a cardinal that was actually building a nest and while you watch him we do want to thank you for coming along with us on this outing if you did enjoy the video today be sure and subscribe and give us a thumbs up if, if you did enjoy it and uh, we look forward to taking you along on more journeys soon as we follow the moon thank you Thank you for watching this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when we have new videos listed. Also be sure to check out our blog at followthemoon.us and also our Facebook page at followthemoon and on Instagram at followthemoontravel. Thanks. <laughs>